All right, gather up your nunchucks, folks. This video is a sneak peek of our new SolidWorks 201 course for uh, SolidWorks white belt ninjas like yourself aimed at uh, gaining even uh, more lethality in your daily SolidWorks ninjutsu regimen, um, hopefully using real-world techniques. Now, whether you are an aspiring industrial designer, professional industrial designer like me, or just an above-average maker, this course is meant to empower people uh, of all kinds to use SolidWorks as a creative tool, uh, in this case for creating a uh, kind of modernist remote control design using surfacing techniques in SolidWorks. Okay, so enjoy the video and uh, head over to cadjunkie.com, of course, for full access to our entire video library uh, whenever you're done. We'll see you soon. So we've established that the design process is messy and non-linear, but one thing that is really nice to know is that time is linear and it is very predictable. Tomorrow is going to come after today, 24 hours after today began, in fact, and uh, the next day we'll uh, do the same after that and so on. And so we can plan for a design process. I'm not saying that uh, because the design process is chaotic, we shouldn't plan for it. I'm just saying that we have to make flexible plans, and that's where this idea of sprints comes in, okay? So we're going to be working in uh, using terminology that comes from the Agile software development movement. And uh, a part of that is working in self-contained sprints. Each sprint is a self-contained exercise where the whole team is involved in bringing about some certain outcome, right? And so in sprint number one, the outcome we are going to collaborate to achieve is a lot of ideas. We're going to take the idea of a remote control and we're going to model a whole bunch of different possible outcomes uh, in SOLIDWORKS in this case. Now, if this were an actual sprint iteration, there would be people using other software packages, I'm sure, and there would be people using just drawing on paper or drawing in Photoshop. You know, an iteration sprint is all about just getting ideas out there and communicating them. Okay, and then we're going to do these other sprints, like developing an envelope for what will be the actual product, and then developing what that product looks like based on that envelope. And then we'll have release candidate one and release candidate two and so on until we end up with a product that actually ends up being manufactured and shipped. And to get this process started, here in SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to say File, New, and create a new assembly. And the first thing we do whenever we create a new assembly is save it. So let's go File, Save As. Okay, so here's my Sprint 1 iteration folder. We're going to work in that to start with, and I'm going to call this my Top Level Assembly. Okay, so my top level assembly is always called out. In fact, I'm going to begin it with two zeros and an underscore. That way it always sorts to the top of the list so we know exactly which assembly is the top level so we can see everything all at once. Okay, so let's hit save. And now from here, we're going to create a new component the way that we've always done it. I'm going to say uh, insert new part. And this new part is going to get dropped in here, right? And we just hit the escape key just so that it leaves it right where we want it. But the issue is this is built into our assembly, right? This is a virtual component. And we know that because it's in brackets. The name of it is in brackets here in our uh, assembly list. So if I right click this, I can come down to save part in external file. Now typically we have not done this so far in my beginner SOLIDWORKS series and that's because for beginners it's really nice to kind of work in one document. You don't forget you've got a bunch of external documents. But when we're working in the real world, we're big kids, we got to think about other people. Other people have to get access to these files. And further, we are going to need access to this file later on. If you know when we make the next iteration of our product, we're going to need uh, an external file for that. So let's say save part in external file. And since we're iterating here, there are more than, there's probably more than one person working on this at once, right? So I'm going to call this Adam01. Okay? Adam001 is what this file is going to be. I'll hit OK. And now we have Adam001 here. Now if I'm working with Josh, for example, then Josh is going to have Josh001 as well. And we're going to put those into this top level assembly so we can see them all at once in one big assembly area to compare them. Okay, so let's get started. 